Hey folks, Big Dana here again. This time taking a look at the quite honestly laughable <laughs> attempt at a bootleg Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Goku. <laughs> so yeah, a um, couple of weeks back I was basically looking about AliExpress and I came across this guy. Now, I had a feeling at the time that it was the no-name bootleg company. <laughs> and they didn't disappoint. Yeah, it's definitely the no-name bootleg company. Um, I'll get to why in a moment. But yeah, let's take a look at the box. Or should I say, what's left of it? Because the seller that I bought him from on AliExpress decided that instead of, you know, actually sending him in the box, that he flat packed the damn thing and put the actual clamshell packaging behind it. Which of course left this open to getting ripped and bent and all sorts of other things. And of course made the figure open to getting broken. Of course the figure's already like horrible anyway, but we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> um yeah, so as you can see there's rips and there's tears and God knows what else, there's bends everywhere. Wouldn't really recommend this seller. I mean he's even there's a bloody cut mark in the the actual window. <laughs> My god. Um some sellers. Anyway, um Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Son Goku. They've completely replicated the Japanese box, even down to putting the Tamashi stuff on the bottom. Naughty naughty. Um, Goku's face there, in his horrible colours that would make your eyes bleed. Kamehameha at the top, with Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan figure arts. Picture of Goku there with what I'm starting to appreciate as... A metallic sheen to the hair. Unfortunately, this Goku doesn't have it. Um, but yeah, Bandai Collector Shop, ages 15. The Japanese Resurrection F logo. The blurb. 2015. Made in China, even though it's not the actual company. A uh, picture of Goku there. Some phrases and a lot of Japanese down the bottom that I can't spell. But yeah, Goku, as you can see, he's quite floppy. <laughs> I mean, as opposed to the fake SDCC attempt that I reviewed in probably a day or two now, this guy is the complete opposite. He has more brittle plastic, shall we say, instead of going for the rubbery stuff to kind of accommodate that. Nope, they've just put them together completely haphazardly. And yeah, at least they built them the right way round this time. Um, I actually... Oh my god. <laughs> Get back to that in a second. Um, yeah, let's try swapping out... Yeah. Let's move on from him before I end up breaking him on camera. Um, in terms of accessories, he comes with the same stuff as the real Goku. You've got very badly painted um, normal face. The hair's not bad, but that face is just horrible. I mean, it's got cracks in the white paint. The paint on this side isn't even finished. Oh, God. Um, you get three Super Saiyan blue faces, and you've got that one. That one's actually not bad. That's quite well done, which is good because I'm planning on painting the blue hair yellow for a more Boo Saga accurate Super Saiyan head sculpt. And this one, again, not bad. You'll notice the faces are quite mm, glossy plastic, cheap plastic probably. And, in their wisdom, they've even copied 
the smirking face down to the fact that there's no um, shading on the smirk. <laughs> um, but yeah, he comes with the same hands. You've got this one. He's in tra instant transmission hand, complete with sprue, still attached. You've got his Kamehameha hands with three sprue. His martial arts posy hands. And his key blast hands. Now, as you've seen a second ago, swapping out on this hand is basically impossible because the entire peg comes out with it. That's lovely. This hand, let's see. Does this one. Yep, that one does actually work. Let's pop the instant transmission hand on. There we go. Um, peace. <laughs> um, swap out a head. Uh, a face, sorry. Let's put that one on. Yeah, the, the faces and the head are actually not bad. There we go. Yeah, so. Um, before I move on to the figure fully, let's have a quick comparison with the real one. I debated on whether I actually bothered doing this because it's quite clear what the real one is, but hey -oh. There we go. That's the real one. Can you tell the difference yet? <laughs> yeah, um, more matte plastic throughout this guy. Um, the shading's not bad in the fake, I'll give them that much. But yeah, just something about the entire proportions seem off. Um, and part of the reason is... Oh, there his hand just came in too. Brilliant. Get back on. I didn't break it this time. Honest. <laughs> um, yeah, you'll see. In their wisdom, they've used the Super Saiyan 3 head peg. Why? That, that makes this head completely useless, guys. That has a normal peg hole. This one has a normal peg hole as well. They've just literally shoved the Super Saiyan 3 peg onto it. I mean, what good is that? And I have checked, that doesn't even fit the normal Super Saiyan 3 heads. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, I know Super Saiyan 3 was their first bootleg figure, but there comes a time where you, you really shouldn't keep reusing parts, guys. Oh my god. And as you can see, it gives him an incredibly elongated giraffe neck. And that's pushed it down all the way. Oh boy. Um, one good point is that they've used the Super Saiyan 3 shoulders. Which, if I compare to this one, you'll see this one is a lot more shaved down. That's one thing I showed on the Super Saiyan 3 figure, which I wish they would have continued. So, props for that. At the very least, you'll be getting used for parts. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is literally solid. You can barely move it. Um, and as I showed earlier, parts just pop off them. I'm really getting some deja vu with this guy. <laughs> um, yeah, let's let's show off some articulation, shall we? Before I end up breaking him in two. Um, the head can move about uh, side to side. The arms can go up, swivel, bicep, joint there, and the hand when it decides to stay in. This side, however, you'll notice they have put together back to front, so that's as much as you're getting out of that hand. Oh boy, these guys are really just in it for a quick buck, aren't they? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, instead of a usable waist, um, it seems to be completely stuck. That, you're not getting any use out of that, guys. It would sooner pop apart. Than do anything. Um, if you're gentle with it, you can 
kind of get it to kick up. Let's let's try it in this side. See if it pops off in this end. Nope, that one's a bit better. You can get a bit of that because of the overly stiff uh, gi piece. The knees are completely useless. They literally flop. And they're also the wrong colour. Why is it skin tone? Why? I don't get it. <laughs> um, and as for the boots, yeah, they just pop off at the slightest touch. Unfortunately, um, as do the bottom of them, although you do get some movement out of them. The toe joint kind of works, although you can see right into it for some bizarre reason. I do not know why. So, yeah. This guy, I'm not even going to bother saying it. He's not worth the money unless you're planning on using him for parts. And the plus side, he does come apart really easily. Oof, he came apart the wrong bit. <laughs> there we go. You just slide that off, and you can literally pop that on one of your real figures and get a better shoulder joint. Yeah, I'm leaving that off for dramatic effect. Um, in terms of the head, I'm still going to try painting this. As for this thing, it's going in the bin. So, yeah. <laughs> um, until next time, guys, I'll see you all later.